Hi everybody. In the past 5 years, we have seen a dozen players jump into the digital payments market. And Bharat Pay, in spite of being a newbie in the crowded wallet market, has already reached a 2.8 billion dollar valuation in just 3 years of its launch. And within this short span of its existence, it's already serving more than 7.5 million merchants in more than 140 cities and claims to process over 110 million UPI transactions per month. But at the same time, if you look at the other side of it, according to Entracker, while the operating revenue of the company went from 0 to 5.96 crores, the losses of the company shot up by 839%, going from 23 crores to 216.32 crores. And for FY21, their cash burn is already at 2.6 million dollars per month. That's close to 19 crore rupees a month. So the question is, in spite of such scary figures, why is Bharat Pay considered among the top 5 fintech firms in the country? What is their business model? How on earth can Bharat Pay become profitable in the presence of giant competitors like Paytm, PhonePay and Google Pay? And most importantly, as investors and students of business, what are the key pointers that you need to keep an eye on to understand Bharat Pay and the evolving fintech space of India? This video is brought to you by Kuku FM, but more on this at the end of the video. This is a story that dates back to 2016 when the payment renaissance of India began due to demonetization. And as we also, 86% of India's cash was declared invalid overnight. But all thanks to internet and mobile penetration, Paytm came as a savior and helped us transfer money even to the smallest vendor through a QR code. And as usual, with such a huge untapped market, several other payment gateways started offering cashback to onboard as many merchants and customers as possible. But while most of us very easily became the adopters of this digital payment system behind the scenes an IIT Delhi student named Shashwat Nakhrani noticed three critical problems in the system Number 1 since each payment app needed a different QR code when you went to a Kirana store at the time of making the payment it would turn out that the shopkeeper only had Paytm while we had migrated to Google Pay or Phone Pay So obviously the shopkeeper would then insist that we make the payment in cash and this defeated the entire purpose of going cashless number 2 while payment apps charged 0% fee on transactions for customers like you and me for merchants there was not a single wallet that was taking less than 1.5% in commissions as in if you bought groceries worth 500 rupees the profit of the vendor itself is just 50 to 75 rupees and in that also 1.5% of the purchase value which is 7.5 rupees used to go to the payment gateways as commissions and if you speak to your local grocery wala they'll tell you how terrible their condition was back then and lastly the awareness of upi system which was practically free was very very less and that's when it struck him that there has to be some way of leveraging upi to remove all charges on payments this is when ladies and gentlemen on 20th of march 2018 Mr Nakrani and his co-founder Mr Ashneer Grover launched Bharat Pay with a vision to revolutionize the payment systems in India. And the first thing that they did was that they leveraged UPI star feature which was interoperability. So now a single QR code was enough to transfer funds from your bank account to my bank account without any hurdles of a closed ecosystem. And the best part of this entire transaction was that it was free for both the merchants and users like you and me. And another plus point for merchants was that while most wallets and payment gateways had a minimum 2 day settlement window through Bharat Pay they got their money credited on the same day itself. As a result, thousands of merchants adopted Bharat Pay in no time. So the question is if this entire transaction was being done at free of cost then how did Bharat Pay make money? Well, this is where the expertise of our shark Mr. Ashneer Grover came in. Mr. Grover spent years in American Express wherein he met more than 100 founders who were into the payment business. This helped him understand the fintech space properly. On top of that, since he was the CFO of Grofers, he understood the problems of the merchants more than anyone else. And this experience gave him two critical insights. Number 1, The margins in retail were too low to burn a hole in the pockets of the merchants with commissions. So the right way to make money was definitely not commissions. Number 2, he understood that although shopkeepers won't pay for the service, they would be more than happy to pay interest on loans. Why? Because one major major problem with Indian banking is that despite micro small and medium enterprises being such an indispensable pillar to our economic growth, 
no private bank wants to lend them money due to either lack of documents or collateral and it's quite understandable because lending wouldn't make sense if there is no instrument to measure the risk of actually lending money to an individual so in spite of all these merchants having healthy balance sheets in spite of they having an incremental increase in the growth unfortunately very few banks wanted to lend them money and guess what this unmet credit gap of micro small and medium enterprises is 1 trillion dollars in india this is a reason why bharat pay tapped on this golden opportunity to start a merchant lending system and they entered the lending space by partnering with non banking financial companies this target segment included 65 million msmes in india that employ close to 80 million people now the question over here is that if banks couldn't lend to small merchants what was so special about bharat pay that they could tap onto this golden opportunity and more importantly how do they intend to become profitable well this is where bharat pay's artificial intelligence algorithm comes in and here's an over simplified explanation to understand how it works just like our credit card companies note our spending pattern every time we make a payment every time you make a payment at a store through the qr code the bharat pay algorithm takes note of the cash inflow at the merchant's end similarly when the merchant pays his suppliers through bharat pay the algorithm keeps note of our monthly inventory value and it also notes a spending pattern and several other parameters to estimate the projected savings income consistency of income and so on and so forth and just like credit card companies look at your spending pattern to decide how credit worthy you are the algorithm of bharat pay uses this data to calculate the risk of lending to a particular merchant this way without paperwork the bharat pay algorithm can decide the credit worthiness of a merchant even if she is in the remotest corner of the country so this way all the progress that our kirana store makes is officially documented by the bharat pay's algorithm and once enough data is collected tomorrow if the algorithm sees that mrs sheetal has a healthy net inflow of 3 lakh rupees per month and if she requests a loan of 10000 rupees bharat pay will immediately process the loan without any paper or collateral similarly if a mr sundar has an inflow of 3 lakh rupees and requests a loan of 3 lakh rupees since the risk is high bharat pay might charge a higher rate of interest as compared to mrs sheetal and once this lending procedure starts the algorithm gets smarter and smarter at risk assessment based on the merchant's loan history and credit score This is how Bharat Pay currently provides unsecured loans in the range of 10000 rupees to 7 lakh rupees for up to 12 months and charges an interest of about 2% per month. Now one of the biggest problems with lending is the collection challenges and defaults. So even if a company wants to scale its lending business through the lengths and breadths of the country, they need a tremendous amount of workforce for recovery. But guess what? According to Bharat Pay its repayment rate is 96% which is among the best in the market so bharat pay is practically an op vasuli so the question is how did bharat pay achieve this incredible benchmark well this is where their leverage with qr code comes in instead of requiring the merchant to pay monthly installments it deducts the amount from the transactions before the bank settlement for each day for example if the merchant has to pay back 15000 rupees installment per month and he has an inflow of 4.5 lakh rupees per month he has an average inflow of 15000 rupees per day so instead of asking for the payment at the end of the month before the app pays the merchant 15000 rupees at the end of the day it by default subtracts 500 rupees as daily installment and then pays 14500 rupees to the merchant at the end of the day this creates a win win situation wherein the merchants are not burdened they don't need to be reminded about payments and at the same time Bharat Pay can ensure that its repayments happen without any problems. This is how merchants pay back their loans in easy daily installments as small as 430 rupees per day average. This is the reason why Bharat Pay has an astonishing repayment rate of 96%. And guess what? As of October 2021, Bharat Pay had already facilitated loans to over 3 lakh merchants and disbursed over 2800 crores in loans. As of October 2021, according to Economic Times, Bharat Pay was processing loans worth 300 crores each month. And today, Bharat Pay loans are available in more than 11,000 PIN codes in 24 states and has a sales force of 4,000 agents to educate merchants on various financial products. On top of that, they have an insane retention rate with 45% of its merchants taking repeat loans. 
and all of this is being done digitally in a hassle free manner with no application fee and most importantly without a collateral therefore more merchants means more data more data processing means better risk assessment better risk assessment means less bad debt which means insane profitability this is the reason why bharat pay is spending 2.5 million dollars a month to onboard as many merchants as possible this is how bharat pay is solving a major problem for the msmes of india using its insane artificial intelligence algorithm as a result they have witnessed a crazy growth of 10x in the last fiscal and now bharat pay aims to disburse loans worth 1 billion dollars among merchants and this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that is considering the fact that bharat pay may soon go for an ipo what are the factors that you need to keep an eye on to decide whether or not to invest in bharat pay meanwhile if you are someone who's hungry to learn such business stories and you don't have enough time to read an entire book you can listen to an audio book in your own region language using the kuku fm app and my personal recommendation to you is to listen to this audio book called fresh works from chennai to nasdaq It covers the iconic story of how an Indian software company went from humble beginnings to rocking the Nasdaq itself. And in the 21st century, India needs entrepreneurs now more than ever. And Kuku FM is on a mission to break the language barrier so that the knowledge of entrepreneurship is not just limited to the privileged English audience. Which is why they have some of the best audiobooks in the world in six different regional languages and you can even listen to the inspiring stories of Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs and even JRD Tata. And you can get your hands on their 1000 hour plus content library by getting their annual subscription at just 3.99 rupees. On top of that, you can get a special 20% discount using the coupon code think20 which will bring down the price of the subscription further to just 319 rupees. And if you are among the first 500 people to click on the link below, you can use the special coupon code THINK50 to get a 50% discount on your subscription, which will further bring down the price to just 199 rupees. So if you want to get an insane amount of knowledge through audio books, download the Kuku FM app from the link in the description. Moving on to the pointers, the first thing you need to study is the P2P lending service of Bharat Pay, which is called the 12% Club. For those who don't know. Peer to peer lending is a pretty straightforward concept. You deposit money with Bharat Pay. Bharat Pay uses the money to lend to credit worthy individuals and pays you back with interest eventually profiting all the stakeholders in the cycle. Secondly, study the consortium of Bharat Pay and the Centrum Group. I'll attach a few articles in the description, but long story short, they are applying for a banking license. And as of now, it seems as though in the crowded payment gateway market with the likes of Paytm, PhonePay and Google Pay, a banking license is a great barrier to entry. For this, even I am trying to understand how and why. So by any chance if any one of you happens to be a specialist in this field, please drop a comment to educate the community or write to us at write to think school at gmail.com. And if we find something concrete, we'll put it out there to educate the entire community. And lastly, now that you know the power of these payment gateways and how they could leverage data to become lending giants, please explore the business model of Paytm and try to understand how Mr. Vijay Shekhar and his team are building a powerful ecosystem to turn Paytm into a profitable fintech giant. Apart from that, considering all the controversy that's going around Bharat Pay and Ashneer Grover, always remember Regardless of what happens to Bharat Pay as a company your job is to not get into the intricacies of the controversy but to understand the potential that Bharat Pay has tapped into and the fact that it has built a business model to address a 1 trillion dollar credit gap so if Bharat Pay doesn't do it someone else will do it and the market is so huge that we need 10 more players to solve this problem so focus on the model rather than the controversy because that's what will be beneficial for you as an investor and before we say goodbye your homework is to let me know in the comments as to how paytm could become profitable that's all from my side for today guys if you learned something valuable please make sure to hit the like button and also make youtube baba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>